<laughs> ending a similar event, said, thank you all for making this day necessary. <laughs> My thanks tonight go first to Gary and Thomas for organizing this, for making this day necessary. And then to the speakers for their lucid, interesting, and uh, all too flattering talks. Late in life, I find that I'm proud of my achievements in physics. Not, of course, in the sense of great accomplishments and discoveries, but proud rather in the sports sense of personal best. I think that I did the best I could given my talents and imagination. But I didn't do that alone. I had the help and collaboration from many, some of whom are here tonight. Uh, but looking back, I'm struck by uh, how much I was helped by luck, by chance, and by circumstance. How lucky was I when I went to a Lezu summer school as a young person here, as a student, to hear the lectures of the great Kip Thorne and to sit with him uh, one day at lunch at the school and hear him say, uh, when we both get back to California, we should get together and calculate some real no 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 rotating neutron star models with those equations you derived. And that's what we did, and a very fruitful co collaboration emerged. How lucky is I, as a young assistant professor, to ditch the elementary particle physics in which I was trained <laughs> and go to the Institute of Theoretical Astronomy in Cambridge, as it was known then, to retrain in relativistic astrophysics. There, I had my first scientific interactions with Stephen Hawking. And many years later, I consider myself most fortunate to be able to count one of the great scientific figures of the age as a friend and to have worked with him on something like an equal basis. How lucky was I to be taken on as a graduate student by Murray Gell-Mann, one of the great figures of the last century, and many years later learned that he had a long-standing interest in the wave function of the universe but lacked the appropriate quantum mechanics uh, to deal with one. <coughs> Together we found one. How lucky was I to have Thomas Hertag ask me one time during a visit, you say that the no boundary wave function in the semi-classical approximation is like a shuttlecock where the top half represents future to sitter space. And Thomas said, so where is past to sitter space? Much work in calculating and predictions of the no boundary wave function followed, many with Stephen Hawking also. How lucky was I to find Gary Gibbons at, the, at Cambridge, who knew everything about a geometry that I didn't know, but still had the patience to work with me. How lucky at Santa Barbara was I to discover Mark Srinitsky, who knew everything about probability that I didn't know, but still had the patience to work with me. How lucky was I to have Neil Turok take an interest in the quantum states of the universe and force me and others to rethink the question of, uh, and simplify its underlying definition. How luck lucky was I to have, amazingly, a, be of interest to the philosophers who had forced me at least to consider the question, what is real? I don't think I've supplied an answer yet. Well, uh, it's been a marvelous experience, and I will just end with a quote from a great American author. Start now on this furthest western way that does not pause at the Mississippi or the Pacific but leads on direct attention to this sphere. Day and night, summer and winter, 
sun down, moon down, and at last earth down too. Thank you all for making this day necessary. Good night.